Good day students, uh, welcome to part four of the integrated algebra regions. Uh, we're going to be going over uh, problems 21 to 25 of the January 2014 release questions. More clips can be found on mathbitchev.com slash test prep under um, New York regions. Let's take a look at question number 21. It says when x is equal to 4, the value of 2x to the 0th power plus x factorial is um, so you have to remember what um, the zero exponent rule is. If you raise a number, a non-zero number n to the zero power, you have to remember that it equal one. And also n factorial um, can be reduced or expanded into n times n minus one times n minus two. And then this product continues descending until you end up with two times one times, yeah, just two times one and that's the value of the factorial. So we're going to apply these two um, formulas to the simplification of this problem right here. So in the expression 2x to the 0th power plus x factorial, we are simply going to evaluate this expression by substituting 4 into x in this position right here and in this position right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and make the um, substitution. This expression now becomes 2 times 4 to the 0th power plus 4 factorial. All right, so let's evaluate this to the sum of these two terms. 2 times 4 to the 0th power, using the order of operations, we have to resolve the exponent first. So 4 to the 0th power, using this formula, is going to be 1. So we have 2 times 1 plus 4 factorial. Um, to, uh, find 4 factorial, we'll just multiply um, the product of um, the numbers from one from four to one. So four times three times two times one is the same thing as four factorial. So counting down from four all the way to one, all the numbers you can find your product. So we have four times three times two times one. Do not include zero or else that will give you something else. Um, so let's simplify this. We have to find a product here. Two times one is two plus 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 1 is 24. Don't forget your order of operations. You multiply and divide first before you add or subtract. So you have 2 plus 24 is equal to 26. So we can clearly see that our answer is option number 3. Now let's take a look at uh, problem 22. We have a system of, we actually have a linear inequality that has been um, presented here. So which of these which graph represents the solution of 2y plus 6 greater than 4x? So if you want to graph a linear inequality, the um, inequality tells you two things about the graph. It tells you where to shade, and it tells you if the line is solid or broken. So we can uh, have the linear inequality in the form y, and there are four choices for the inequality symbol. It could be less than, less than or equal to, greater than or greater than or equal to. So picking any of these inequalities, you have um, that, and then you append your um, other component of your linear equation. That's going to be mx plus b. We have all these, and then you add mx plus b. Now, the reason I'm writing it in this form is in order to accurately determine the nature of the shading or and if the line is solid or not, mainly the nature of the shading, the line must be in the form y equals mx plus b. Okay? And then this in this equation right here, this equality sign can be replaced with any of these um, depending on the problem. Now in this situation, we have um, 2y plus 6 is greater than 4x. So before we can even determine where to shade, we must put it in this form first. Okay? Now, um, Let's talk about the shading and if the line is solid or broken. So for an inequality, um, we can either shade, the shading can either go up or we can shade down. So when do we know um, when to do what? Let's make a grid here to make a um, little template to help us determine where to, where, where to shade. It could be shaded up or down or it can be solid or broken. So how do you know if a line is solid or broken? We're going to take a look at that right now. 
So there are four possible inequalities that we can have, less than, less than, or equal, greater than, or greater than, or equal. So if you're shading up, you have greater, okay? So if you think about it, if you're above the roof, um, that means it's greater, so you shade above. So for greater than, um, it's going to have to be the inequality pointing in this direction, okay? So greater than inequality, um, you can think about a G, you can just add a G right there and see how it looks like a G for greater. So this is how to remember your greater than inequality. Now, which of these is broken and which is solid? You just have to remember the role of the line underneath the inequality. The line indicates inclusion, which is solid. So in order for this to be solid, we have to add a line down here, okay? So these are the two formats of the greater than inequality. Greater than or equal to means you shade up and it's solid. Greater than, strictly greater than means you just shade up and it's broken, okay? Now if we reverse these two, then we have the next two columns of our chart. So for less than or equal to, you shade down and it's solid. And then for just simply less than, you shade down and it's broken. So using this chart, we can eliminate two options from this problem. So if you look at this inequality, there isn't a line underneath. So that means the line must be broken. Okay, so let's eliminate two options, option two and four, since they're solid. Now, where do we shade? Do we shade, um, does this inequality indicate shading the top or the bottom? The answer is we do not know yet. This inequality must be expressed in points and slope intercept form. And then we'll look at the inequality behind y um, to determine where to shade. So we have 2y plus 6 is greater than 4x. So the goal is to isolate y using algebraic procedures. So first of all, we get rid of the 6. We subtract 6 from both sides. That yields 2y is greater than 4x minus 6. And lastly, we just divide both sides of the inequality by 2. Now, if this were a negative 2, that would invert the orientation of our inequality. Since we're dividing by a positive number, there is no change in the orientation of the inequality. Okay, that greater than orientation is preserved. So we have y is greater than 4 divided by 2 is 2. 4 divided by, uh, so we have 2x minus 3. So since we have greater than and the equation in y equals mx plus v form, that means we're going to be shading up and the line must be broken since there's no inclusion line underneath the inequality. So we can clearly see that our answer is option number three. Okay, in option three, now the line is broken and the shading is upwards. All right, let's take a look at problem 23. It says, which represents the exponential decay of a radioactive element? So if you um, have a visual um, recollection of what uh, an exponential graph looks like, it's really easy for you to determine the accurate result. So an exponential function um, looks like this, increases in this order. This is a, an exponential function. This Formulation y equals a to the x represents growth, okay? This is exponential growth. Well, the problem talks about decay. Um, the equation for exponential decay is of the form y equals a to the negative x. And this negative x just simply means we're reflecting the function in the y direction, okay? Where it's a, a vertical reflection. So the function of an exponential decay the graph of an exponential decay function looks just like this, but it's reflected downwards, okay? So it looks, <clears throat> it has an, an orientation like this. So since time is always positive, there isn't any negative piece to this function, so we can eliminate the portion to the left of the y-axis. Draw my exponential function again, so it's gonna look something like this for a um, decay situation of an element. So it's gonna look something like this. So we can clearly see that the answer is option number four. Just using your knowledge of the graph. Now, if you do not remember what your graph looks like, you can also determine the answer using a method of elimination. Now we are talking about decay, which means it the function decreases with time. If you look at option number two, this is a growth function, so we can eliminate that. 
Now we can apply our knowledge of the family of functions to basically arrive at the correct answer. If you look at option one, this is a quadratic function right here. This is quadratic. It belongs to the quadratic family. Option three belongs to the linear family. It's a straight line. And this function right here is an exponential function, exponential function. So just by methods of elimination, we can clearly see that our answer is option number four. All right, let's look at number 24. It says, which fraction represents x squared minus 25 over x squared minus x minus 20 expressed in simplest form? So we're going to be applying two factorization processes to the simplification of this expression. The first one is the difference of squares. If you recall, a squared minus b squared can be factored into a minus b times a plus b. And um, to factor the denominator, we're going to actually uh, factor by grouping. So let's go ahead and start with the numerator. Let's extract that first. The numerator is x squared minus 25. Now to factor this, what this formula tells us to do is simply root the first and the last term and add and subtract the different, add and subtract the roots of these two terms, okay? So what we're going to do here is basically take the square root of x squared and the square root of 25, and we'll find the sum and the difference of those roots. So the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 25 is 5, so we have x minus 5 times x plus 5. So this is the factorization of the numerator. Now let's shift our attention to the denominator. For the denominator, we have x squared minus x minus 20. So this is a trinomial. We want to factor by grouping, so um, we can make use of the x gain to factor this, also known as the AC method. So um, the product of a and c goes on the top. So this is a, the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is a constant. So AC is negative 20 and B is negative 1. So you think about two numbers that multiply to give you negative 20 and add to give you negative 1. So if you're having difficulty exhausting the possibilities, you just simply create a chart of the product of numbers that yields 20. Okay? So um, to get 20, let's start with the basic one, which is 1 times 20 is 20. 1 times 20 is 20. Um, 2 times 10 is 20. 4 times 5 is 20. And then we have a complete list. All right, so if you combine these two, you get 21 or 19. That's not our target of 1. 2 and 10 gives you 12 or 8. That's not our target. 4 and 5 can give us 1 if we subtract, right? So a combination of 4 and 5 should yield negative 1. Now, since the sum or since the sum is negative, that means the bigger number must be negative. So let's do a real quick check. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. 4 minus 5 is negative 1, so it works. All right, now since A is 1, we can skip the factoring by grouping process and jump right to the factored form, which is x minus this term right here, 4. Actually, it's x plus 4 since it's positive, and x minus 5. Okay, we just extract those two terms and put it in the factored form. Now, this um, process of skipping right to the factored form only works when a is equal to 1. If a is, a, is not 1, then you must factor by grouping or else you get it wrong. Okay, now we have the numerator and denominator factored. All we just have to do is find the quotient of the simplified forms or the factored forms. So x minus 5 times x plus 5 on top divided by x plus 4 over x minus 5. So simplification involves um, dividing out common factors in the numerator and the denominator. So you can clearly see that x minus 5 is a common factor. So the reduced form is x plus 5 divided by x plus 4. And that's uh, our answer for number 24 is option number 3. All right, let's take a look at 25, uh, the last uh, problem in this installment. It says, if a, b, x minus 5 equals 0, what is x in terms of a and b? So we have an equation. 
ADX minus 5 equals 0. And this is basically assessing our ability to solve um, an equation or formula for a variable. It's the same thing as some solving an equation, but in this case, we're solving a formula for a variable. Okay, so to get X expressed in terms of A and B is another way of saying solve or isolate X. Okay, that's um, another way of saying uh, execute these processes or these procedures. Okay, so how do we get X isolated? Think about doing PEMDAS backwards. That will help us accomplish the goal. So we'll get rid of 5 by adding or subtracting. Then we'll get rid of um, AB by either division or multiplication. So let's go ahead and isolate X. We'll add 5 to both sides of the equation first. When we do that, we'll have ABX equals 5. Now these three um, the values here are associated by product, by multiplication. So to separate them from X, we have to use the inverse of multiplication, which is division. So we'll divide both sides of the equation by A and B so that we can have X isolated on the left side of the equation. All right, so this AB is divided out to 1. And then our final result is X equals 5 over AB. And the answer for problem 25 is option number 1. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to our channel so you can get updates to the next parts of this review and, um, series. And do uh, post a comment to let us know what you think about this presentation. More clips can be found on mathgoodstep.com slash test prep. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.